a piece of component and that's going to be in inch cube. So, as I said that the first one is really a um, cylinder. So if you're looking if along the x-axis, this should look like this. Then you have the plate. See this bottom plate? <coughs> you can see the hole in here. This radius here will be half of this. That's going to be 3 inches. This radius here, that's going to be 1 inch. This whole thing going from here to here is going to be 6 inches, where this by itself is going to be 1 inch. So that's the view you see for that component when you look through the x-axis. So <coughs> if I need the volume, what we could do is we could take this hole as one single unit. We, we take the whole half cylinder as one single unit, then we're going to subtract this hole, or we're going to treat that as a negative volume. So in here, since the radius is 3 inches, your volume 1 should be the area of cross-section, which is pi 3 square, and then it has thickness of 1, so you multiply that by the thickness. And this should be, this is, this is 9 pi inch cube. So I could write this as 9 pi, we only have the dimension. What? This one here? Uh, <coughs> there should be a half, you're right, so there should be a half here, and <coughs> I put a half here. Because that was the volume one, then if I need this centroid. Now, the origin is point O, and point O sit, doesn't sit on the front surface, doesn't sit on the back surface. It sits right at the center line of that plate. So it's really about point five behind the front surface. So <coughs> if it's 0.5 behind the surface, then <coughs> if I'm looking for the centroids, the centroid of this will be around here, and it's a <coughs> the cross-sectional area is half of the circle. So if you go to the back of your book, there's a table and on that table, the distance is given as, this distance is 4 r over 3 pi. <coughs> so the centroid is going to be around somewhere at this point, but it has to be 0.5 at the back position. So if I take, let's say, Three more columns here. If I take column X, I bar, we take another column as Y bar, we take another column as C I bar. Which means the coordinates, the X one bar. <coughs> should be zero y1 bar is 4 radius is 3 over 3 pi and then c coordinate for this one will also be 0. So in here we get 
So I think it's cancel, you get 4 over pi and you get that as 0. So that's all the data we need for the first volume. Second one, as I said, is the whole. That's V2. Its area is pi, radius is 1, so it's pi 1 is square. Multiply this by 1, except that's the whole. So it has to be a negative volume. So since it's a negative volume, so this comes out to be negative pi inch q. So we place this as negative pi. Then you need the coordinates for the centroid and your point O is located right at the middle of that hole. I mean O is the origin and is right at the center of the circle and it's, it's, it's behind by 0.5. So the centroid of this hole, I mean the centroid of this hole is going to coincide with point O. So if the two are same, then your x2 bar will be 0, your y2 bar will be 0, and c2 bar will be 0. Because the actual centroid for the hole is at the origin. So <coughs> these three columns, the entry goes to zero. So that's the data for second volume. Now let's look at third one. Third one is a plate. It has a width of six. <coughs> There's a depth of one. Then the height. The height depends on how you work your way here. If I take the plate going from this point all the way up here. So you have four inch up to here, then you have to add an extra inch. So <coughs> this is going to be five. And that gives you thirty inch cube. <coughs> then we need X three bar, Y three bar and C3 bar. So what happens to those coordinates? 